Hello lovely people, in this tutorial I'm going to give you six tips to make sure you get great photography on your next photo walk. And at the end I'm going to give you a bonus tip that's quite controversial. Hello, I'm Mark Newton from the School of Photography where we teach you the best in photography education. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna give you six tips to make sure you have a great photo walk. And at the end, a very controversial one that some people will love and some people won't love. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, my first tip is patience. Now Cartier-Bresson once said that you don't have to walk around and around to try and get the perfect shot. Sometimes you just find a really nice composition and you wait for life to appear within it. And that's what happened here in this shot. It started off with me seeing this squirrel poking its head out of a bin. And I started to look, I started to take pictures of it and then I noticed that underneath where the squirrel was eating, there was a sign that said general waste. And I thought, wouldn't it be good if I could get a picture of the squirrel coming out of the bin with the general waste sign underneath? Because squirrels are vermin, or grey squirrels in our country, in, in England they're vermin. So I just thought it would be quite ironic and quite a fun picture if I could get a picture of these grey squirrels above a sign that said general waste. So that's what I was gonna go for. So I went round to the front of the bin and I sat there and I waited and I waited and waited and waited and eventually the squirrel came back, poked his head through the hole and I started to take some pictures. And then I thought actually I'm too far away from the bin so I wanted to get closer. So I got closer and of course the squirrels run away again so I had to wait there again for ages. I'm kneeling on the floor, people are walking past me thinking that I'm some kind of madman just in the middle of the street but eventually the squirrels came back and I managed to get this shot and I really really like it. It's got a lovely composition, the bin is nice and central and the squirrel there is eating his nut or whatever he's got out of the bin directly above the sign that says general waste. And I just thought it was a nice fun shot and it was worth waiting for. So that's tip number one, have patience. Okay, now tip number two is this, look past the obvious. Now what you will find with most documentary photographers or street photographers is they're photographing things that no one else normally sees. So try and look past the obvious. So my photo walk was down the River Thames in central London and I walked past the Tate Modern. Now I like art and I decided to go in to see the Mondigliani exhibition and I would really recommend that you go and see that if you're in London. Obviously around this time it's there for a few more months now. And the obvious thing that you could photograph when you was in that exhibition would have been the lovely sculptures or the paintings and all of the lovely artwork of Mondigliani. But what I started to notice was people were taking pictures of the artwork on their phones. Now that is actually quite a new thing. You never used to be able to take pictures of artwork inside exhibitions and inside galleries, um, or certainly in the UK anyway. I found it really interesting that people could take away in their pocket a little piece of a Mondigliani painting, if you like, a little personal piece of artwork for them. And that's what I started to find really interesting while I was walking around this exhibition. So what I started to do was focus on the people photographing the work. And I started to get some good shots and they were showing people um, looking at the paintings etc and then I got this little number here which I really really like. I came across this guy taking a picture of one of Mondigliani's nudes. Now I just thought it added something more to the shot. It's probably as innocent as anything but a shot like this with a nude in the background 
will add something more to the image. It will make people look twice. It's just human nature. And I also think it adds an element of humor to the shot as well, and I really, really like it. So that is my tip number two. Look past the obvious and try and see things that no one else will see. Okay, my third tip is to try and take some portraits. Now this takes a bit of guts, it takes a bit of confidence, but anyone can do it and you'll be surprised how many people will actually be up for it when you ask them if you can take their portraits. So I'm walking along the River Thames and I'm seeing people sitting on benches and I just walk up to them and I say, I'm doing a project on portraits along the River Thames. Do you mind if I could take your portrait? And sometimes people will say no, but sometimes people will say yes. And all you can do is ask. And when they say yes, that's when you can start getting some really good portraits. Now I started, I did a little warm up with this shot here, which is okay. It's just a picture of a young guy sitting on his phone, nice shallow depth of field. And I carried on walking. I took a few more portraits actually, but I didn't really like them. And then I came across this um, older lady here who I thought was really interesting. She was sitting there reading a the paper all on her own and I went up to her and I told her the story about taking portraits and she was a bit dubious at first and then she said yes. So I snapped this shot and I like this picture. It's nicely balanced for a star. I like the composition of it but I like the look of the person here of the model. You hardly ever get the chance to stare at someone in the eyes, but you do with a portrait. And if you can get that in your pictures, if you can get someone to look directly into the lens, you can really get that look where the viewer stares into the eyes of someone in the street. And if you start to do that for real, you probably get punched in the face, but you can do it with a portrait. So that's my tip number three. Try and take some portraits. Also build your confidence up as a photographer. Okay, before we go on to the next tip, I just want to tell you about the online courses that we have over at the schooloffotography.com. So we are professional teachers. We don't just show you good stuff. We teach you how to do it. We've got courses in photography, uh, Photoshop, Lightroom, and we've got a load of free stuff over there so that you can test us out if you want to as well. So if you want to learn photography properly, come over to the schooloffotography.com and check out our online courses. Okay, back to the tips. Tip number four is to look for symmetrical compositions. Symmetry is a great way to make things look clean and neat and tidy. And while I was in the Tate Modern, they've got this big hole called the Turbine Hole in there. And there was an art installation and a big silver ball and it sat nice and neatly in the middle of, these, of this big window. And underneath it was a carpet full of stripy colors and I decided to get myself nice and symmetrical and take this shot. Yeah and I really like it, it's just a nice neat and tidy shot. And then whilst I was walking back down the River Thames I went under one of the many bridges and I noticed all of the ironwork underneath it was in a lovely pattern so I decided to take a lovely symmetrical shot of the ironwork of underneath the bridge. And here it is here. And I've also turned it black and white on the computer and just added a little bit of contrast to the shot. So what you can do is take what would normally be a boring subject and turn it into something quite abstract and crisp and clean. Now, if you're not familiar with what composition is and how to use it properly in photography to enhance the look of your images, I've got a whole in-depth lesson on composition. I'll put a link to it somewhere around here. Go and check that out. Composition is probably the most important important thing to get right before you start learning all the technical stuff. So that's tip number four, use symmetrical compositions. Okay, tip number five is to limit your equipment. 
do not walk around with six lenses, a tripod, massive camera bag, bottle of water, whatever you need. Limit your equipment. I was walking around with one body, my DSLR body, and my 50 mil lens, which I can't show you right now because I'm actually filming on it, but overlaying now is a lovely picture of me holding it. And this is the equipment that I used, a 50 mil prime lens and my DSLR body. It's your limitations that's gonna force you to be creative. For instance, if you haven't got a tripod, you're gonna have to start leaning your camera on the floor, on benches, on walls, and you're gonna get some really interesting shots because of it. If you've not got six zoom lenses that's gonna go zooming in and out, you're gonna have to physically get closer, walk back, twist the camera up, down, etc. Limiting your equipment is gonna force you to be creative, so that is my tip number five, limit your equipment. Tip number six is to go alone. Most people go on photo walks and they try and get their friends to go with them or they sign up with a group or whatever. You don't need to do that. Go on your own. Yes, it is good to go with people and that helps you out as well. But every now and again, go on your own because you'll be surprised what you can do. You'll be much more creative, you'll see things that other people won't uh, influence you to see if you like, plus you can do what you want. You can go over there if you wanna go over there, go and sit and have a cup of tea. You are not bound by anyone to do anything. So that's my tip number six. Take some time out for yourself and go on your own. Okay, here's the bonus tip now. This may upset people, but my bonus tip is this. If you don't get the shot, you can always Photoshop it. Now, some people are gonna be screaming at the screen now saying, no, that's not photography, but it's always an option. And personally, I don't mind it at all. And that's what I did with this shot here. So this is a shot of the tall chimney that, or what was the chimney in the Tate Modern because it used to be an old power station. And I mean, it looks, it's all right, it's, it's dramatic, it's going up very high, but it's boring. The light was very flat and it's just a boring shot. Now, if you're adapting Photoshop, you can do this. Add clouds in, make it look like it's a long exposure. Give it some drama with some uh, color overlays and stuff like that. And yes, people might say that it's cheating, but it's always an option. I don't mind it. Well, let us know in the comments below if you think it's a good thing or a bad thing to do. And that's my bonus tip, heavy photoshopping. Now, I hope that helps you out, guys. Photo walks are a great thing to do. They get you out in the open. They get you practicing. I love them personally, and I would do them every day if I had the chance. Now, don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. Put a comment below. Tell us what you thought. What one of the tips did you like the best, etc. Come and check us out on Instagram and Facebook if you're watching this on YouTube, and YouTube if you're watching this on Facebook. Thanks for watching and remember, learn more at the School of Photography.